Excel Slicers, the cool way to filter data. Excel Slicers is a great way to filter data in a table on your spreadsheet. Let's take a look at how we can load some sample data and create these filters using slicers. Let's start by loading some sample data into a table that we can use to create a slicer. Did you know that in Microsoft 365 or Office 365 versions of Excel, you can go to the Home tab and then over to the right there's Analyze Data. It may also be called Ideas if you have an older version. When you click on that, there's an option here to try sample data. And that loads a set of sales information into your spreadsheet. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to the Home tab and click on Clear and clear the formats for that data. This gives us a nice clean set of data that we can use to create slicers. An Excel slicer is just a fancy way to do a filter with a little bit better interface. This set of sample data comes with filtering turned on on all the headings at the top of the list. So for example, I can click the down arrow and I can set just the year 2015 and it filters the data based on that year. If I do the category, I can select just one category and it's going to show just that set of data within that year. Whether or not you have filtering turned on or off, you can still create a slicer and it's a little bit better interface to access your data filtering. So let's go ahead and click on the year up here, go to data and turn off the filtering. That clears it out for all those headings. Whenever you create in a slicer, just click anywhere in your data set, go to insert, pick slicer from the menu, and now you can choose which slicers you want to insert into your spreadsheet. Let's just do the year, category, and the product. Hit OK. And now you can see it creates a list for each one of those headings. I'm going to spread these out so it's a little easier to read. And now I can select just the year 2015 and it filters that data based on that selection. Let's do bikes over here and I'm back to my filter selection I chose earlier but it's got this nice interface in order to select your criteria. If you want to clear any of your criteria just come up here in the upper right and click that button that clears it out and selects all the data. You can do the same thing here. The other thing you can do is you can do a multi-select so if I pick 2015 click this button for multi-select and then you can pick another year from the list and it selects both of those sets of data in the filter. This is how easy it is to create a slicer on your data set but there's some other things you can do with slicers so let's talk about those too. Here are a few tips when working with slicers to manage your data. First off, if you select a slicer, you can right click and bring up this menu of options. Here you can change the sort order, you can do your multi-select, you can even remove the slicer, you can move it into front or behind different objects, and there's an option here for settings. This allows you to change the header display name, it's got the sorting options here as well, and you can do some things to adjust when there's blank data. Another tip, if you want to come down to the bottom of your data list and add another row, we'll just copy this one as an example. I'm going to go ahead and delete the component so that's blank and we'll change some of the values here. Now when we go up and look at our slicers, you'll see that there is now a blank option and if I click that, it shows me the one where the category is blank. So that gives you some additional filtering options. You can also put totaling at the bottom. So let's say we want a subtotal of all of these values. Let's click the auto sum from the home tab and it fills in the total. We'll do the same thing here. But in this case, I'm going to hit this down arrow and we'll put in the average. Now what's nice is even though I have added those subtotals, I can still do filtering and it shows you the subtotal of just those filtered sets of data. 
Now you'll notice the formula is subtotal for both and this code right here represents whether you're doing summing or averaging or counting or other formula options. So make sure to use that subtotal if you want to create a dynamic list with the subtotals at the bottom. Now that I've created those subtotals, if you clear that filter and come all the way to the bottom, I can actually click on that and drag it and we'll put this all the way up here at the top. We'll do the same thing for this column. And you can do your filtering and see those values change right there at the top. Also, all of these slicers are created in the name manager. So if we go over to formulas and click on the name manager, you can see the category product and year listed in here. So if you want to remove one, like deleting the product filter, now when I go to the name manager, it's gone from the list. So it's managed in the name manager. You can also right click and remove instead of hitting delete to remove that slicer. Another tip, if you hold the left mouse button down and you start from the bottom, you can highlight multiple items by moving the cursor up. You can also hold the control key down and click on multiple items. And you can hold the shift key down and it selects the range. Also remember if you select a slicer, you can come up here to the slicer option on the menu and it has some of the same settings like changing the caption on the year or going into settings. You can change the width and height of that window for the slicer. You can do some alignment stuff and you can select different styles if you prefer to change the look of that slicer. Let's also take a look at how slicers work with pivot tables. Excel slicers become even more cool when you combine them with pivot tables. So I'm going to click inside of my data table right here, go to insert, pivot table. I'm going to let this create a new worksheet. And now we're going to take the year, the category, and the product. We'll put those in the rows and we'll take the sales over here and do the sum of the sales value. You have a pivot chart with the sum of sales. If you click anywhere inside of this chart, you can now go to the Pivot Table Analyze tab and insert a slicer. It comes up with the same choices that we had earlier. Hit OK, and it creates slicers that now work off of this pivot chart. Let's do a little moving around here and change the size of some of these. And one little trick that I didn't show you earlier, you can change the columns and have multiple columns in your slicer. Now that we have this data set up, I can click on the year, the category, and any one of these products in order to filter out my pivot table. Another cool feature is you can tie this to multiple tables. So let's say we copy this chart. We'll put it over here. But in this one, we're going to take the sum of sales out of there and we'll put the rating in instead. And instead of sum, let's change that field type to the average. So now we have another chart. And when we change the values over here, you can see that it has the average rating and it's linked to the sum of sales that are available in this chart as well. Very cool. If you right click on the slicer and go to report connections, you can see that it's checked with both of those tables. Same thing's true of these other slicers. And that's how you can tie it to multiple pivot tables at the same time. If you found this Excel Slicers video interesting, then I'm sure you're going to love my 50 Ultimate Excel Tips and Tricks video. Check out that link at the end of this video. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up and leave a comment. I really do appreciate your support.